Hey guys, today let's talk about dithering. Dithering is a method to get much better results for astrophotography or even standard photography by basically increasing your signal to noise ratio at basically almost no, co no cost to your imaging uh, process. So basically how, the, how this works is that instead of taking the same exact uh, star picture of the same star field in the exact position in each frame and then stacking everything together almost identically, you will introduce a jitter a little shift between each frame so that the stars in each of your frames are in slightly different positions from frame to frame and that jitter is kind of random and why this is very useful and it works a lot it works great is because your sensor your camera sensor has something called fixed pattern noise which is basically noise of the sensor that is more or less represented by your dark frames and it's always there to stay and if you're not doing any dithering and you have perfect alignment, perfect mount, you'll actually stack the fixed pattern noise on top of one another as well as stacking the signal from your star field or your galaxy or whatever object you're imaging. So you're basically not increasing your signal to noise ratio as much as you could. And if you're dithering, you're actually kind of averaging out the fixed pattern noise because it's now moving around, whereas your star field, which is aligned between each frame actually get stacked together. So you get much better signal to noise ratio, even if you're calibrating your light frames. Now, um, there's also another advantage in that you actually get more information about the target that you're taking by dithering because the light from a star or from any point in your image in one frame will reach like maybe two or three pixels and in another frame it will have moved to a small per portion of another pixel and by basically interpolating that information you can uh, upscale your image in a much better way than a standard like upscaling of um, a low resolution image into a high resolution image. And I will show some examples in a moment. And what's super interesting is that Google does exactly the same thing in their Pixel 3 and Pixel 4 smartphones, uh, where when you actually take a picture with your smartphone, your um, uh, your hand is kind of moving because you're a human being, not a robot. And also the lens on the smartphone, if you look at it, you, you'll see it jittering a little bit. And this is to introduce artificial dither. And what Google will do in the background of your phone, it will actually align the frames afterwards in real time using the power of machine learning and that way it gets better to signal to noise ratio in exactly the same way that we're doing in astrophotography but also it can do this kind of uh, um, artificial zoom that is better than a standard upscaling so it's super super important to dither there's almost no drawback to dithering except some lost imaging time but seriously believe me you are after signal to noise ratio and there is almost no better way to get better signal to noise ratio than dithering besides you know going to a dark zone and not imaging from Tokyo like idiots like me uh, but otherwise let's have a look I'm going to go inside and show you how dithering affects your images so let's look a bit at what dithering is in actual practice so here I have a little video on my screen which I'm going to play where you can see that all of those, this is a whole imaging night that I had and you can see the pictures to picture, the frame is jittery, right? It's dancing around. The object is never in the same place. And this is exactly what dithering is. When you're dithering, you're doing that so that when you stack, you align the frames based on the stars in the end. And when you stack them in the end, the signal from the object will be stacked, but the uh, noise from the sensor, which is always like moved a bit around because now the stars are static after you've aligned them, but the sensor, the frame itself have, has moved. So you're averaging out the noise and you're increasing your signal to noise ratio. It's extremely impressive in terms of result. So let's have a look at uh, a little stack of frames. So this is exactly the same stack of frames which I've integrated in two ways. One way on the left here is I've simply uh, aligned the stars and this is with dither. I have dithered my frames. So I have moved the frames by a random amount in a random direction between 
each frame, actually not between each frame, but every three frames in that case, because I was taking so many. And you can see here, this particular image, we have aligned the stars. And if you just forget about the object, just look at the background, you can see the background is quite smooth. There's vignetting because this is uncalibrated, but that's fine. There's like some kind of color randomness in there, but that's because of light pollution. But otherwise the background itself is quite smooth, right? There's like the noise itself, it's, there's a bit of noise, but it's smooth. You cannot see a pattern. You cannot see hot pixels. Everything is kind of doing okay. Now, if we change to another frame, this one is exactly the same set of data, but I haven't aligned for the stars. So obviously uh, the stars themselves, they're not aligned. So the object is a mess. So that's normal. But here is what is hap what would happen if you are not dithering frame to frame. You can see there's a horizontal pattern of lines and this is probably the bias signal from my frames. And you can also see that there are tons of little hot pixels here and there like red here, green here, blue here. So all of those are remaining in the image if it's not calibrated. But even if it is calibrated for by dark frames or bias frames, although I personally never use bias frames with uh, CMOS sensors, then uh, it, some of this, some of this noise can stay in there. So it becomes much more difficult to process. And it gets even worse if you are actually doing uh, if you have poor polar alignment or poor tracking of your mount so that you have like a movement, a rotation of some field rotation from your stars or like a movement that is constant in between the frames rather than being random because then you get something terrible like this. This is a picture I took seven years ago. It's been a while. It was from a balcony where I did not have access to the north and I was too lazy to do a proper drift alignment of my mount. So I had very poor polar alignment and I was not dithering. And this is the result. You can see this noise here that has an actual pattern is walking noise. And this walking noise is extremely difficult to process out of this frame. And uh, almost impossible, I'd say. You, lo you will lose details from for, for that. And the only way to really avoid that walking noise is to dither. I cannot stress how important it is to dither. And the uh, dithering is also uh, important to do another operation, which is called drizzling. Drizzling is when you can take a uh, a higher resolution from lower resolution. You're, you can upscale your signal using um, dithering. And by that, it means that basically you're taking many frames. They're slightly offset from one, one another. So the same point of light uh, doesn't come onto the same pixel, kind of like part of a, a pixel or lit, lit at a time. And you can use math, the power of mathematics to actually increase the resolution of your final image by taking this information of your image that's been across several pixels, across several frames to get higher resolution. So to give you an example, this is, is something I took last year uh, from a fairly relatively dark area with a 135 millimeters lens if I remember correctly and look at the stars and at the details of the galaxy those stars here are quite blocky right they're they're very low resolution and including some of the stuff within the nebula itself is just a block of pixels but if we do some drizzling which becomes possible only if you're dithering you can actually see and this is the sorry this is the exact same integration, the same data, the same images, except that I have drizzle now. You can see how huge a difference that makes. The stars now have a much, are much smoother. They're not in perfect focus, but that's a problem of my capture, not anywhere, anything else. And including the, the galaxy itself, the little blocks like within the galaxy are much clearer. Uh, they're much smoother and it will, be, it will be easier to actually sharpen them out during processing. So with dithering, you really gain so much. You can gain in signal to noise ratio. You almost don't need to do calibration because the background noise will be averaged out in between the frames and you get the ability to drizzle to get a higher resolution if your image was undersampled like here it is with 135 millimeters um, uh, focal lengths. 
So this is, you know, the power of dithering. And Google uses that exact same technique that we've been using in astrophotography in their night sight mode in Pixel 3 and Pixel 4. And the way that it does that, it will actually take multiple frames, one after another, nine if I remember correctly, almost as a video, and it counts on the fact that your phone is handheld, so your hand is actually moving a little bit between the frames. You can also look uh, directly on the pixel lens and you will see it moving a little bit to actually do the dither dithering on its own. And it was not possible uh, a few years ago to actually be able to align those frames automatically because unlike astrophotography, you do not have stars to align that. So you don't have perfect reference points to do that. But with machine learning, Google basically managed to identify the objects on the frame so that it can do real-time alignment of all of that so that it can apply real-time dithering to your frames to get a better signal to noise ratio, which is what night sight is doing, but also to do drizzling which is basically the same uh, algorithm that we use to do drizzling. So you get a higher resolution from a lower resolution sensor. You can actually get more resolution than a simple upscaling from a single image. So if Google does it, does it you should too, especially that it's very easy. So let me actually show you that in Nina. It would be the same in many other capture software. The only condition is that you typically need to have a guider connected. So, but that guider, and you can see here, I'm connected to something that's called Direct Guider. Direct Guider is a fake auto guider. It's basically just connected to the mount and it can only do dithering. I implemented that about a year ago into Nina. And it basically will move the mount blindly with a pulse guide uh, to like in a random direction. Um, with like a certain uh, duration of the pulse guide to basically do some dithering, some blind dithering. You could also have PHD2 uh, or if you're using other software like uh, that are compatible with your software like MetaGuide, which is not yet compatible in Nina, uh, you can actually do uh, sighted uh, dithering with the auto guiding software that will actually perform the dithering for you. And in Nina, once you have a guider connected, you can actually just go into your sequence. And if you have that guider connected, you'll see this dithering uh, option here, which you can put on. And then you can choose how many, like how often you want to dither. If you're doing like very long exposures, like five minutes exposures, to me that's very long, then you probably want to dither every single frame. Uh, if you are doing very short exposures, like I do, 30 seconds exposure, you might be okay dithering every three frames or even every five frames. In a single night, I'll take like maybe 500, 600 exposures. So, so I'm fine dithering every like three to five frames. And uh, because like dithering is very good, but if you're dithering every frame when you're doing 10 seconds frame, there is a time that dithering takes like maybe 10, 20 seconds, uh, sometimes more. Uh, so you have to kind of think about how much imaging time you're losing as well. But for me, in uh, all of my imaging runs, I've been doing uh, dithering every three frames with 30 seconds exposures. Today, I'm actually trying with five frames. We'll see what that gives. But you can see the flexibility and the power that is given to you by dithering. So really, dither, it's the law, or maybe not. But, you know, uh, you should try it. So I hope this helps you uh, image better. Don't forget to look up because it's always beautiful outside under the stars. And I hope uh, if you like this video, click like and subscribe. And I hope to see you next time.